I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Hello, friends. I'm Paul Hahn, coordinator of Mission in North America, where we exist to strengthen the church in the gospel of Jesus Christ to serve, grow, and multiply. I'm reading to you from these opening words of Paul's letter, his first letter to the Corinthian church, in which he's going to address many problems, a number of problems they bring to him, a number of problems that he brings to their attention. There will be many. But he starts here with this challenge, with a call to true unity in the body of Christ. He says, be in true agreement of the same mind and of the same judgment. Uh, there are all kinds of forces in Corinth that work as there is just this collision of worldviews going on in this cosmopolitan city, this global city, this transient city, this city that is uh, in some ways at the world's crossroads. And, and Paul is saying to them, look, you're going to have many forces pulling at you, shearing at you from the outside, but be one in the church. Have true oneness in the church of Jesus Christ around that which makes you one. Christ crucified for you, for your sins and the sins of a whole world of people. And then he talks about internal forces that can divide them a little bit later in the same chapter. Some were saying, well, I'm of Paul, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Apollos. Uh, they're sort of playing on who their favorite preacher is or maybe what their favorite pet doctrines are. And Paul's saying, don't do that. Don't be divided like that. Don't quarrel over preachers or your hobby horse doctrines. You are one in Christ through the gospel. Be in utter agreement around that which truly makes you one. Christ come, Christ crucified, Christ risen from the dead to bring us into his resurrection world. Last week's webinar at m and focused on this whole idea of unity in a, in a radically diverse moment in our culture politically, externally, and, and in all kinds of different views going on internally in the church about politics or about justice or about engaging issues uh, all around us in the culture or about how to even handle the pandemic. Um, we are one. Go back and check out last week's webinar, Oh, Heal Us, Lamb of God. Uh, this week's webinar is on how do we maintain emotional health, mental health, uh, going forward in a season like this and how the church with the true gospel of Jesus Christ touches into all of our lives, including our emotional and mental health. How does the church become a vehicle to promote true emotional and mental health in Jesus? We are one. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, Vice President Biden, I'm filming this last week on Thursday night when we still don't know who the president is. Maybe it's Monday when this drops. And we still don't know who the president is. But Biden spoke today and talked about, listen, I don't know if I've won, uh, but if I am the next president, I'm not going to be a red president, certainly, but I'm also not going to be a blue president. I'm going to be a purple president. I'm going to seek to bring all of us together. And we need to be not red people in America or blue people in America. We need to come together as purple people. Well, uh, whether he is president or President Trump retains the presidency, Certainly, we pray for that kind of unity around uh, biblical principles uh, of governance uh, in our world. But this we know, the true purple people, the truly unified people who stand at the center of the world are the people of Jesus Christ because the cross of Jesus Christ stands at the center of the world. Very early on, the church uh, chose the color of purple to celebrate Advent, to celebrate that season we'll remember in the church year coming just in a few weeks of Jesus coming in the world to be the world's true king. It was a color of royalty purple, but it was also a color of suffering, of blood being poured out, of pain and anguish pictured by the color purple. And that's who we are. We are unified as sons and daughters of the world's true king but we are unified as his people who glory in his sufferings and who complete his sufferings in the world, laying down our lives so that the world may know 
the truth of Jesus, the love of Jesus. And we delight in suffering with him so that a weight of glory is created in our lives and for a whole world of people who will come to know him and delight in him. So may we be this unified people. May the world know that we are Christians by our love for one another. May we, we, we truly be one as the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one. Jesus came to do this. May we be in agreement about that. Go in God's peace and love.